Good afternoon traders and welcome to our live webinar. I'm Juan Maldonado from the Elliott Wave Street and it's a pleasure to share with you some of my live market examples, live market analysis. I have been trading for a while over the 10 years, last 10 years, and I really like to trade, I really like to share what I see, I really like to teach how to trade these complex markets and nothing better than learning how to trade the markets using the live markets. When I was learning, I, I read the Practor book, uh, which is the, the book that I used to analyze the theory that I used to analyze the markets. And it was pretty hard because at that time I didn't have a, a mentor to show me how to, to, to use all that theory into the charts. So finally, when I was able, after years, when I was able to do the things right, to do the wave counts in the right way, I started to share them. And I have been sharing the, sharing the wave counts every day with my clients over the last years. So I, I really like to, to give you um, a live market approach because it's important uh, for my clients, for my students to, to learn how to uh, do the uh, wave counts on the live markets. But more than uh, doing the wave counts, it's important to learn how to um, trade them, how to validate the end of each wave so today we're going to focus on that on the live markets we're going to see some examples on different markets stocks uh, some currencies some futures where the plan is to explain what i'm seeing the plan is to share with you what i'm seeing in terms of elliott wave and come up with a trade plan come up with a clear trading plan all right so let's start today with the euro uh the euro from uh, the weekly chart it's in a pretty complex scenario and i'm going to hide some of the waves don't worry if you are new to elliot wave don't worry at all i'm here to explain what to do with these uh, cycles but actually if we go to the monthly chart on the euro we know that in general terms lately the um, dollar has been winning the, the battle you know the, the euro was so much expensive back on um, 2008 the the euro was almost at the 160 area so it was pretty pretty expensive so one of the things that we can see here on the euro is that the price has been going down the the trend is down we have here lower lows lower lows lower lows lower lows lower lows a retrace and here the price is going down so on the long term even before this emergency and this is the, the, the same wave count i have been having for years on the on the long long term i'm looking on the euro for a continuation down so I, i'm thinking that the euro is gonna continue lower during the the next years and eventually we can have a bounce later but before seeing any any bullish scenario on the euro i think we're going below the parity level below the, below the one area that on the monthly chart is like nothing it's just a, a little movement here but of course uh, we can have a move there from around 800 pips to the low right now we are inside a corrective wave and that corrective wave it's going to capture all our attention on the lower time frames because once we have a wave count on the big picture then we can go to lower time frames and find the best place the, the right moment to jump into the trade the even we can scalp with with these wave counts or we can just the day trade or we can swing trade we can do anything but with this market structure is not a standalone solution that is going to help us to to make a lot of money 
just using the Elliott wave count. That is not true. But if we add the wave counts to our strategy, then the results are going to be impressive. Because when we are using Elliott wave, and I think that any technique, there are two things, two main things to watch. Thing number one is to do the analysis. And thing number two is to find how to validate that analysis. How to validate the analysis in terms of Elliott wave is finding the end of the wave. That's the key. Because as you can see, we have waves, and that's true. We have cycles. It's a fact. It's not subjective. We have legs. We have the price moving from one side to the other side, from one side to the other side, from, from one side to the other side. So we have cycles. And we can place names. We can put names to these cycles. That's the Elliott wave theory. We name each of these cycles. And just with putting a name, just with putting a, a label, just with thinking that the price is going to move in one direction is not enough. Then we add validation. And validation could be as simple as a trend line, as the breakout of the trend line. Let's say we want to find the end of this E wave, the end of this wave X here on top. And a validation could be a breakout of the trend line, for example. And we are going to see examples on the live market in a second. But it's important to, to teach this point first. So that's a validation. So we have the wave count plus a validation. Without the validation, the price could very easily continue higher and then break out the trend line later, and that will be the validation. And in the meantime, you can move your wave count to the right. It doesn't matter. Because the wave count can be redraw during the market cycle until you have a signal. And once we have the signal, then we are going to trade. For example, here, more, more close to the, to the actual price, look at the previous cycle on the euro. We have a, a leg up, pretty strong leg up, and eventually couldn't continue higher, and it started to go down, and we are in that live market cycle, right there. So our job is to understand the internal price action in order to find the trade. And this exercise, I do these wave counts manually, completely manually. I have been doing them for years. So once you have this big picture, it's like a puzzle. It's like a huge puzzle that we need to connect the pieces. But once we have this big picture, it's going to be easier on the lower time frames because we are going to be able to understand the direction to know the big picture because we know that the big picture is the most successful uh, picture that we can have technical analysis on the big picture works fantastic when we start going down it's going more complex on the other hand if we go to a one minute chart, the noise is going to make us uh, see the markets in a different way. And if we have the big picture context, it's going to be so much easier to take the right decision. So keep in mind that Elliott wave theory is not something magic that is going to make us rich, is not something that uh, just with Elliott Wave, we, it's going to be enough to, to, to be good traders? Not, of course not. It's just a tool. For me, the main tool. But it's going to show us the roadmap. And during this presentation on the live markets, we are going to focus on finding the end of the waves. On opening our minds to see that the markets move in cycles. And that our mission is to find the end of those cycles. And this is so exciting because it's a different way to see the markets. And you can add to the Elliott Wave theory whatever you want, whatever you know. If you know uh, price action rules, fantastic. If you know candlestick patterns, great. If you have an uh, EMA crossover strategy, fantastic. You can bring it out to, here to the chart and 
use that thing to validate the waves. But now you know what are you looking for. So let's continue drilling down to the next time frames. On the other charts, I'm not going to take this time to explain how the theory works. Of course, we're just going to focus on the actual trait. Um, here on the weekly chart, we are in a consolidation. And when we go to the daily chart, now we're getting closer to the forecast. So look, here on the daily chart, what I'm looking on the euro is to have a leg down uh, to this area right here. We are in a box formation. And I was thinking last week that the corrective B wave, the corrective B wave is from this high over here all the way down on all this complex price inside. Huh. We are dealing with a complex B wave this time. Um, is active. So, so that leg, that B wave is having this sequence. Leg down, leg up, leg down, leg up. And is missing, is pending one leg more to the downside. And once we have the completion of this leg down, I would like to buy the euro in order to have a higher high above A, to, to have the completion of wave 2. And from there, I want to start planning the big sell trade on the euro. The, the one that could, could, could give us a um, thousand pips or more to sell. But in the meantime, we're not going to sell. If we go to the big picture, if we see the monthly chart is telling, hey trader, go short because I am in a bearish trend and I'm just taking a pause. But that's the beauty when we go to lower time frames, because we are going to be able to find the end of the corrective waves and to trade inside these waves. But there is more. We can continue drilling down lower. On the four hour chart, the, the euro started the leg down. And if you watch the video I was um, showing today, uh, the setup in, in the YouTube channel, uh, that one of the ideas was to sell euro below this low over here. I didn't take it in my account because I'm going to take the Aussie that I'm going to check, uh, show you in a second why I prefer the Aussie. But the wave three is active on the euro and we can expect here a continuation down on the euro and the target for the week is the 107.27. So before, what my, my job before was finding the top of this market. And there are different tops. Sometimes we have tops like this one, where we can very easily draw the resistance. And I was telling my clients last week, oh, I hope this was a, a Monday to sell it from the top. I'm not going to take a swing trade on a Friday. But for example, there it's a clear double top. The candles are validating the reversal because we have um, a spinning top formation with the red candles breaking the low. So with the wa with the yellow wave counts, uh, when you master them, um, and when you have a clear picture of what's going on, then you need to master the entries. The plan at the end of the good trader is to trigger the trade as soon as possible, as close as possible to the to the end of the market. In my personal case, I don't take the trades at the top of the market, like the last point, like the last pip. I, I don't know how to do that. Maybe you have a technique that, that is good doing that and you can add the wave counts to confirm, for example. But in my personal case, I trigger the trades a little bit later. For example, if this was a Monday, here was my trade, my first entry with my technique, or today below the low, with this red candle. So of course is not at the top of the market, is is having a lack the entry, but it's safer. For me it's safer because of course the euro is giving confirmation that we are going down. But there is something else. I develop this strategy, the cyclone revolution. So um, on the cyclone revolution I have like my my entire uh, experience and i like to trade with price action i like to trade with candles i like to 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 understand a little wave 
but I also have a pre-objective system to find the end of the waves. So with this system that you can learn with me, I'm, I'm going to give you a very special offer today at the, at the end of the webinar to take my course and learn everything about the lead wave and the cyclone revolution. But look, this system is also an, another tool to tell us the end of the waves. So for example, here I have an EMA crossover that is telling that the, that the cycle is done. Then I didn't have any other more than the one that is happening now. So we have another signal over here. And of course, if I go to the hourly chart, it's going to accelerate this, this thing. <clears throat> Plus, I create this indicator that is a mix between the awesome oscillator and the MACD. So I, I put both together, the awesome and the MACD. And here we have the signal as well that the end of the trend is done. So, for example, if we take the short, then... Uh, we can wait for another signal to take profits at the other side. And another interesting thing about this indicator is that helps to find the cycles from one side to the other. So I can say this is a wave because from below the zero point, it crosses here and goes up, crosses the zero line, goes higher, whatever, and then crosses here. So now I know with a high probability that the euro is starting the bearish cycle and that I'm going to see something similar here uh, later once we have the cycle going down here. Right? All right. So, so once I have this cycle over here, I can take some partial profits, for example. Also, I use some stochastics to find uh, the top of the market. So for me, it's very important to have these stochastics at the, at the 80 side before taking a short trade. So I'm in, in a position. And finally, I use the ADX to, uh, to, to start finding the, the sentiment of the market. So we have the ADX red line, the D minus going up. Well, the D plus, plus is going down. So that's another confirmation. So what I do with my trading is that I line up all these indicators in order to have the perfect trade. And of course, along with price action, with the wave count, of course, for me, the foundation is the wave count. And then we follow the price. So that's the strategy. And the good part of these kind of trades is that we can have a tiny stop loss. The risk is minimum and the reward is pretty huge because we have a lot of room. So even if we have a really bad month, um, even if we have a really bad month, then we can perform well. Let's say that from 10 trades, on a really bad month, we were able to perform six positive or four positive week because we know that never is going to be the 100%. I have been having months of eight trades out of 10 going well or 80%, but some other months of 6%. Right? So or 60%. So, so no matter that, and even if you have five out of 10 with a proper money management, you can do well. So this is my summary. Like if you ask me, what have you been doing during the last 10 years or actually more than that? My answer will be after trading and, uh, and doing live market analysis every day during the last 10 years, this is, this is my, my result. This is what I found to be pretty useful in combination in order to find the trades. It's pretty good. Uh, so we have a question here. Is it like an Elliott Wave Oscillator? Uh, the awesome oscillator is the same Elliott Wave Oscillator. See, yeah, so that will be like my green thing here on the background. And the yellow stochastic says the same thing as the, uh, the second. Sometimes, 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 because I use that for, for the, to, to read the cycles, you know, the, 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 the orange um, strand on the, um, 
on the on the cyclone is for me key because it needs to travel from one side to the other and once i have it in position i know that we are getting closer to the end of the trend i'm not going to take a short trade because that indicator is above 80 is not enough i need to add all the other things all right so that's the way i trade and this is the forecast on the euro now what if we go to a stock and then we go to a, to a future market and then we go back to another currency let's have a look at let me check which one was going to be one of my favorites yeah alibaba alibaba is going to be one of my favorites this week let's have a look at the daily chart first and uh, we can start from there all right so this is the daily chart on the daily chart uh, Alibaba has been uh, going up after this strong leg down that I'm calling here the, the wave 4. So this webinar is not for experts on the yellow wave theory, so don't worry about it. It's going to be something very simple, the trade that we are going to see here. But here we have the price going up and we are in the retrace. So when when I'm finding my favorites i never pick the ones that are expensive for a buy trade so i never picked for example if alibaba is here at the market top i'm not going to pick this one as my favorite to to buy it because i need a retrace i need a better value i need a discount but this is one of the biggest issues on the yellow wave theory when you read the book the Elliott Wave book, or you browse online for the Elliott Wave theory, whatever, you find that the theory says that when you have a wave one, you're going to have then a wave two, and that that wave two is going to end eventually, and the wave three is going to start. So the, the main issue that I found with the Elliott Wave theory is that, okay, so that's the theory. And I have been seeing a lot of traders that are coming to my desk to ask for help that the way that they're using the daily the, the theory is they are using the they are buying while the price is going down. So let's say that we have a three wave sequence down here, and they start buying. And if we ask the reason why the trader is buying. The, the reason is because here was a wave one and here is the wave two. That's the reason to trigger the trade. And when you trade like that, you're going to lose a lot of money. Trust me, I was there too. I learned the aerial wave theory in that way as well. Well, the aerial wave theory works if we have a five wave sequence, then we have to, to buy during the wave two. And with that logic, the price could very easily continue lower doing a deeper wave two and taking you out if you fight the trend or worse than that going to the invalidation level the previous low and invalidates the wave count and you lose a lot of money so what i have been doing all these years is creating systems strategies and every day learning and learning more how to validate this thing how to know that actually that was a wave two and, they, and that it ended and it's time to buy it. Not, not to buy because the price is going down. That's a huge mistake because the price can continue going lower. So I, I like this example on Alibaba because we are there. We are there finding the end of two on the live market. So we are going to do it together. I'm going to show you how I would start to buy an Alibaba because with a high probability once the corrective wave is done we can see Alibaba here at the 216th then back to the previous high the 230 area and this webinar is being recorded right this this webinar is being recorded so don't worry and we have a question can i take a sell trade on the euro right now i think it's a little bit late but the aussie is almost ready so so we're going to check the aussie in a moment 
the euro is a little bit late and the stop loss is too big. So, so we are going to check the, the, the Aussie. I think that the Aussie is the right one to, to take the short trade. All right. So here we are looking for another move up on Alibaba. Now, our thing that we need to solve, the question that we need to solve is if wave two it's done or if it's active the scenarios are very subjective the price can go up can go sideways or can go can go down and if someone tells you that analysis you are going to say that the guy doesn't have any idea of what is going to happen and it makes sense so that's what Elliot Wave is telling. So we can say that guy Elliot Wave theory doesn't have any idea of what's happening or what's going to happen. Actually, it's not true because we have a high probability of a wave three happening. But the big question is when, how, where? Well, let's do it. Now we have the big picture analysis. We can start drilling in. We can start going to lower time frames to find out what's going on. So we are going to add the Fibonacci levels here. And the price is getting closer to the 88.6% Fibonacci retrace. It's going to, it's one of my favorites. And if we ask the cyclone revolution, the cyclone revolution is going to tell us that the market needs to start showing the reversal. So a, a, an easy, a very easy way to trigger the trade with a low risk and a high probability of finding the end of the market cycle will be here. We can go to the 15 minute chart and we can use here a price action technique along with the cyclone is to add the support line over here. Old support. Now, the rule to take the trade on the 15 minute chart is going to be pretty easy. So listen, we need to have a green candle breaking this high that is also going to to start a, a deeper cyclone setup of course you can learn that on my on my course and here we have once we have that green candle i will place a buy stop order above the high of that candle that closes above this level the 193.10 i think it is let me confirm yeah 193 i will i will place a buy stop order right there so the next candle will trigger the trade and the stop loss could be just below this line over here or at the previous low. Like it depends what we want to do in that moment. But I think that below the line will be enough because we, we want to capture the bounce. We want to capture the wave three. So we are not taking the trade like the crazy guy trying to find, trying to pick the bottom because that crazy guy did the same here and did the same here and did this, 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 the same here. And he's always buying and buying while the price is going down. And I think that's so risky, but that could be one way to get into the trade. Now, let's have a look at the S&P. Here on the S&P, what I have been doing for the last weeks is finding the end of the wave X, this wave X over here. So my main plan is to have a three wave sequence on the S&P. One, two, three. But again, we have the Elliott wave issue and is it when is going to end the wave X? When the wave X is going to end, when we are going to have the validation. So we are going to ask the cyclone revolution system to help us with this one because we already have the Elliott wave count. I already, I already did the job of doing the wave count, but it's not enough with the, with the wave count. This is just a scenario. We are going to validate. And we are going to come up with a clear trade. So here is the daily chart. On the daily chart, there is something very important. When we are finding an impulse, you know, an impulse in the Elliott wave theory is when you have the one, two, three, four, five. Is this one? One, two, three, four, five. And it's very important to have this a slope of the wave three for the wave three that's a wave three the wave three something huge something powerful 
in this case, if the S&P were doing a, an impulse, we're doing something like this, one, two, three. You, you see breaking this line over here, the channel line, when we connect the bottom with the first retrace. But we don't have that. And when the price remains inside, this channel is telling that it's corrective. That's an additional hint. So I create this, this um, guideline to understand the, the wave three. But more than that, we have a breakout of the trend line. We have a breakout of the trend line right here. And the price started to go up creating a higher high but staying below most of the time the trend line oh so that's a that's a fake move up because it's going up but it's not being able to have the same slope as before so that's very important because in this case is i think in this case is quite an easy trade because the Fed is not going to be able to continue with this fake movement. I think that they should do something different. But of course, it's easy to say after the fact. They have a good intention to, to, put, to print money, to put it in the market, and push the market higher. Well, the, the, the emergency ends and the economy starts to activate again, and, and the market can continue going by itself to the upside but the but but i think that the mistake that the fed did was that they they use all their money in one or two or three weeks and now they are running out of money because the debt is huge so this is like if you have a country you can print bills right you can print money in your own country because it's your country and what if you print money to buy the index or to buy stocks on on your on your stock market of your country is that going to make you rich no of course not it's a trade that you're doing because you can print money the fed is the only one that can do that and this trade is with the money of all the american people because we are going to we're going to need to pay taxes for for years to pay for this trade that the Fed did and is likely to disappear all this money once it goes down. So I think that will be different and wiser from the Fed just to spend the money, but not that aggressively, just recovering the market from the lows and extend that money for six months for one year and not spending everything in one or two or, or three weeks to create this thing. This monster that it seems that is not going to, to go anywhere. So let's continue with the cyclone analysis. With the, with the cyclone revolution analysis, we have now a high probability trade because, especially on lower time frames, I really like the four hour uh, time frame. Uh, we already have the signal for the top of the move. And we are going, we're in the retrace. So it's my favorite place to take the trade. Because the plan is that if we have an impulse here, the impulse ended and we are in the corrective wave. There are different ways to trigger. One is to leave a sell stop below one right here, just in case something unexpected happens and the price starts going down strongly and we miss the trade trying to find a more complex wave too trust me it, it had been happening to me before that i have the, the the ideal setup and i wait for a beautiful abc zigzag for the wave two and i'm waiting for that and the price has different plans and it starts going down just with a tiny retrace so that's why I create the emergency entry that is to sell below the wave one. So I leave it the order there. I, I added some points below the low to capture the trade. And if I have a beautiful wave two, 
well i'm going to be able to trigger inside now let's go to the hourly chart to find out what's happening here all right so here we are uh, we are in the in the wave two um inside this is the wave a this is the b wave and we are in the sea leg gap and that's the other thing you know fibonacci levels we, we always want to know the magic fibonacci level that is going to make us rich so it's going to to be the 50 if i cl create a cluster with different levels it's going to be maybe 618 or the 786 or, or the 886 so the trader that loses a lot of money is a trader that starts placing sell limits so if you place a sell limit at uh, 29 30 on the es or the mes the new instrument pretty nice and the price starts going up is going to trigger your trade but what if you're in the wave three so it's going to to trigger your trade and you are going to lose a lot of money because you didn't wait for the reversal that's the that's the wrong way to use the yellow wave theory and fibonacci levels we know that eventually fibonacci is going to the, the price is going to end on on any of these levels we don't know which one impossible to know but what if for example we say okay this is the abc formation and i want to add a line over here is one of my favorite traits what if we add a line at the end of a and if we have a red candle closing below this line over here again i can sell it from there so i have a short cyclone trade on the four hour chart but on the hourly i'm increasing the the timing you know I, i'm i'm having a better timing to take the trade because here the question is it, how deep our wave two is going to be so it's a fact that w sometimes we have shy wave twos this could be it some other times we have complex and deep wave twos almost a double top and that's another thing that can happen the price can make a hard high those are scenarios and these are traits two different things and that is why when you see an Elliott wave analysis that becomes invalid, you're going to say, oh, Elliott wave doesn't work. No, actually it works. Just that didn't validate, for example, right? So here we're seeing the opportunity to get into, to jump into the trend. If this is right, we have a clear idea. We have a clear plan how to trigger the trade. Now let's have a look at the currency then we pick another stock and then another future could be oil right so this is the aussie the aussie is doing the same that the euro is doing oh and here, here we have a question from hunter trade so hunter says is the cyclo revolution part of Elliott wave street yes yes i'm going to show an offer at the end of this webinar that is going to be able just um it's going to be in the website just for this week but i'm going to talk about that later so the aussie is doing the retrace for two so that is why is one of my favorites so what i'm doing here with the aussie it's similar to the s p oh that's interesting huh that's pretty interesting because this is something that is happening these days look at look at this formula that i came up to understand the markets the s p goes down if the s p goes down is because the is because the market is in trouble is because the economy is in trouble but this time if you are an investor and you check other countries and you say okay the us is in trouble i'm going to bring my money to somewhere else and you check the other countries all the countries are in real issues if you go to emerging countries oh that's pretty risky if you pick um europe oh europe is in real trouble if you pick asia oh asia come on asia too risky so maybe you're going to say oh no i prefer to have the cash 
And the next question is, what cash? Should I take, should I have Aussies? Should I have Canadian dollar? Should I have a US dollar? Should I buy Bitcoin? Should I have gold? And the answer these days during this emergency is to have US dollars. And this is a fact. This is not forecast or, or something crazy. This is a fact. That's something that we have been seeing. So when the S&P is going down, the US dollar is going up because investors are uh, closing their trades, could be in the local market, in the S&P or other countries, and are buying dollars to have their cash, like Warren Buffett. The, the meeting this this weekend, he said, um, I, I'm, going, I'm going to sell my, my airline stocks. I wish them well. Um, I prefer cash. I think that stocks are too expensive relative to the economy i'm gonna wait for a better value right and and that guy is pretty smart so we have a strong us dollar and if we have a strong us dollar then in terms of the currencies what we are going to see is the euro dollar the aussie the kiwi the new zealand going down against the dollar because we're going to have a strong dollar so look where we are we're depending on the s p and this is not a rule that is going to work from now on always it's just during the crisis correlations are something that you have to be extremely careful because they they are th those rules are break all the time but right now that's what we are seeing so in order to to have this trade we need to have the S&P going down to push the, the US dollar higher and to bring down all these currencies. And of course, if one of these countries or zones are performing um, better than the other, or if they are having bigger issues in their economies, that's going to push the price lower faster. So actually, what we are doing here, what we are doing here is selling S&P when we trigger the Aussie. Well, that's what we are doing, and that's pretty cool. Or selling the Euro, or selling the New Zealand. And in case that the Fed tomorrow morning says, huh, surprise, I'm going to print more money, I'm going to put more money into the market, so the S&P is going up and all these currencies will continue higher, because they are moving exactly as the S&P. These days, it's not going to work later, maybe. So we have to make sense. We have to understand that. We have to have an open mind here. And the trade that we can take on the on the Aussie um, will be here. Oh, so the same. Look, going back to the four-hour chart for a sec for a second. The same as the others. I'm going to leave a sell stop order here below this low. Some points, because sometimes have been happened to me that the price goes down, triggers the trade, and then ends doing a flat and then goes down. And because I like to use a small stop losses, it takes me out and I can miss the trade. So one of the ways that I found to fix that issue is by adding a little buffer. With a little buffer, it helped me to, to reduce those traps, right? It happens. And here we have a question. If we, if I check the fifteen-minute chart, I am a swing. I'm a swing. I am a swing trader. However, I have a time of a scalper, like seven years ago, uh, and I like to scalp sometimes. But all these things that we are doing are the same on lower time frames. I think that the lower time frames are harder to to master because it's easier to get lost on the lower time frames. That's why Elliott wave theory is key because you can bring all this information to the lower time frames and scalp using the wave counts of higher time frames. I don't think that you need to have a, like wave counts on a, a minute or a 15 minute chart because if you have the hourly, you know what's going on and you can very easily see the waves inside. So no problem there using this analysis to, to trade inside. All right, so let's talk about the setup on the Aussie. So the, the wave two could be dip or the wave two could be shy. Those are the two options. Uh, and on the worst case scenario, 
the the top is not this one yet and the price is going to make a hard high so we have to be careful with that and we shouldn't do crazy things so one of the things that we can do is wait a little bit more for the Aussie to move a little bit higher here here we can have a, an impulse and I would like to add the resistance line here at the top of A so the same as the others if the price reverse here like the the trade that we were talking on the s p there i can start taking the short i can add a trend line over here to watch how it's gonna react at this level because it could start making a three and then another move up before the end of two that's the tricky part and we'll leave in the meantime the sell stop below one 10 20 pips below wave one just to make sure we don't get the trap and we validate the end of two we can also add the, the cyclone revolution system uh to to this thing so uh let's do it here we have the cyclone oh let's have a look in the four hour chart for me the four hour chart is always key look look how beautiful this thing works so here this cross tell that wave w was done then we have here two more crosses for the three wave sequence here we have the beginning of 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 the of the next move up i'm not telling that we're going to take all these trades very easy to tell that that happened on the past right more complex to to apply it on the live markets so here we have the corrective wave some sort of triangle beautiful thing uh, here the cyclone was telling a, a an entry faster than the triangle breakout and here we have the cross again so it's telling that that market cycle is done and we are in a new market cycle now we can go to the hourly because the markets are fractal to see the internal cycles so here we have a cycle over here because it crosses down we have i call this indicator the cyclone d um it crosses here it crosses and it crosses here because it's fine it's telling that that the wave one is done right so let's say you are you were short for some reason so that was the area to take profits very objective something that the Elliott wave theory doesn't have the Elliott wave theory is subjective and we need to use these tools to make it objective and here uh, once the wave two ends i would like to see more bullish price action however uh, we can be we need to be ready for the surprise you know what if this thing collapse well you, we just sell it below the low and that's it um and if it's nice the wave two deeper here or maybe here at the next second cross we can sell it actually it will be better if we have a deeper wave too that would be better right because it's going to give us a better trade so look what we can do with Elliott wave Elliott wave is not giving the signal what Elliott wave is doing is showing uh the possible roadmap of course with a high probability but it's not going to give us precision then we add a system like this one to find the end of the waves and we can do this exercise on any time frame of course now let's go back to the stocks uh let me see what else do we have here interesting could be twitter yeah let's have a look at twitter uh twitter is showing a bearish potential is now doing the the leading diagonal wave so let me move it here to a leading because the wave forward move inside the wave one we might have a, 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 a setup here we, we're going to check it on lower time frames but look the main plan on twitter is to have a leg down back here to the 20s so the price makes a higher high a higher high right here it creates the crown pattern that is one of my favorites right there and we are testing the old resistance now acting as support 
But I think that this is a way forward that is in progress, and we need to have another leg down, then the corrective wave two, and then we can get ready for the wave three. So this is a, a lower time frame trade. And here we have a question. Ruth is one of our students. How much pips of stop loss will you have when the, you have the emergency entry? Um, okay, let me finish this one and we go back and I show you the ATR to decide this, this stop. All right, so here we have the setup. Let's go to the 15 minute chart. And I'm going to add this Icelon Revolution system to understand the better what's going on here. All right, it makes sense. We have our Elliott wave cycle. And the wave three, we are in the wave four, seems that is active right here. On the 15 minute chart, it seems that the, that the wave four is going to be a three wave sequence A, B, and C, because today couldn't make a five, only did a three, and it started to go up. Okay, so this one is easy for tomorrow. Let's go to the five minute chart to plan the trade. Let me zoom in a little bit. And we know that we are in the wave four. So this is a double zigzag. A, a, B, C for W. A, B, C for X. And here we can look for another uh, A, B, C. Or if it's a five, it's going to be a C leg. So we'll be fine. Or we can go with something simple here. A three wave sequence. But then we look to the previous high. And that's the 2840. And now we know that the that Twitter needs to make a higher high because we have a three wave sequence down instead of a five. And if we check the Cyclone D, the strongest leg on the Cyclone D when we are checking this chart is this one. So this thing is not an impulse at all. So here comes now the strategy. This is the analysis. And this, this is the strategy. Once the price goes above 28.42, right here, and reverse, reverse means that we have a red candle. That's pretty easy, a red candle here. So the price goes a little bit higher. I don't know how deep. Could go 28.50, 28, 29, it doesn't matter. But once you'd reverse here, we sell on the next candle below the low of that candle, for example. Or we can combine this price action guideline with the cross, with the Cyclone Revolution cross. Or, or, or trigger to validate. And here we will go with a tiny stop loss at the high, whatever the high is. And the target, the previous low. Here we will be trading the wave 5. And that will be it. But this is a huge trade from 28.40 to 27.20. This is a pretty big trade. So all these things are the ones that we can do using a little wave and, of course, the Cyclone Revolution. Let's go back to the Aussie for a second. And then we check oil uh, to talk about the stops. So with the stops, I like to use... Before this emergency, I was doing 30 pips for all my trades. But with this emergency, uh, the volatility has been going up, so we have to be more careful in terms of stops. But I really like to use the ATR on the 4-hour chart. What the ATR shows is the average in terms of pips of the last 14 candles on the time frame that you are. Of course, if you change the time frame, you just switch to the hourly or the daily or any time frame is going to show you a different value. But I like the 4-hour chart. So, for example, on the 4-hour chart on the Aussie, we have a 36 pip, 36 pip uh, average on each bar. So we can add it up a little bit. We can go with 50 pips. So if we sell right here, uh, I like to add the buffer. So the, the, the low precise low is 6373. I'm planning to set it uh, 6360. And with 50 pips, will be 64.10, uh, around here. That's it. Why? Because 
if the price goes down, my plan is that we are in the wave three, and the wave three is a fast leg. If we have the price going down and then doing this thing and then breaking to the upside again, that's opening the door for a more complex wave two. And we have been there. It could very easily happen. So that's why we need to use a small stop loss in case that the price starts doing like something like that. Like here, for example. I was trapped here. I remember that. Right? So like waiting here for a one, two, three. But the price, instead of doing that, reverse. And it's better to take out the trade quick because we know that it's going to the previous high. So that's the tricky part. Timing, good stop loss to let the trade breathe without killing the trade, using different positions. I like to use three positions, but but that's for, for another webinar, you know, to to talk about trade management. It's a it's a whole topic. Now, uh, let's have a look at oil and other futures market. I want to share something with you about oil it's a pretty interesting case okay so let's go to the members area for a second let's have a look at the past reports it was like January something when I was uh, looking for for the setup January 6th, around January 6th will be fine. All right, so here we have oil. And at that time, at the beginning of the year, this was the, the big picture forecast. I always publish for my clients every Monday the big picture report with long-term charts. And I was finding the end of the corrective wave, the same analysis that you are seeing here, but I was finding the end of this corrective wave to start the leg down. At that time, from the fundamental point of view, was a crazy thing. Because it was going against the fundamentals of the time. We have a strong US economy, fantastic jobs creation, Everything was going well. But the wave count was telling something different. I was thinking that was something more related with supply or maybe demand rather than an economic crisis. I didn't know that. Nobody knew that. So, But that was the forecast. And when we check oil these days on the higher time frames, That same weekly chart, that wave X that we were seeing was this one here. And I was expecting to see oil at the 40s. That was my first target. Maybe the 30s. But look at this thing. How is is accelerating to the downside? The May contracts, the, the future contracts, the um, CL, May, 2020 went to minus 40. Wow, that's against all the all the laws, you know, having a negative instrument. Like what? That was pretty crazy. But the spot is a little bit higher. However, it's likely to continue lower. So oil eventually may jump higher, but not yet. I think that oil is in real trouble because he's doing this powerful leg down it's like a wave three you know it's crazy so trying to buy oil these days yeah it could jump higher but it's so crazy you know in a world where nobody's flying where nobody's taking vacation where people are in their homes we are not even taking our cars to go to the store we're using delivery all the time you know so it's hard but if we go to lower time frames, we are seeing oil going a little bit higher uh, because inventories in the U.S. are going down. That's good. 
but we don't have demand again. So what if we add our cyclone revolution system and we ask from something more objective? So here we have the momentum with the cyclone D, the price making a higher high. Clearly right now is divergent and we are at the market top. So if you see this chart, the only thing you are not going to do here is to buy oil. You can do nothing or you can short. If your broker let you short, most brokers are not letting take short trades these days. But you are not going to buy. Why? Because it's too expensive. We are traders. As traders, we need to find good value. What is good value when we are buying? Buy cheap, sell expensive, basic rules. So you don't need to be an expert to see that here we have something expensive. When was cheap? Here was cheap. I didn't buy it or I didn't suggest to buy it. But that was cheap. Now after the fact. But now we know that is expensive. So what I will do here on oil would be to track the price and find the sell trade if the broker allows to take the short. So if we add resistance line over here, there we go. And the price completes here the market cycle. There we go. For the wave four, and the price completes the market cycle for the wave five. One more. There we go. We can sell it either here, once it reverses back to the 15, could be a way to validate. We can use the cyclone on the hourly or the 15 minute chart to validate the, the end. Or if we want to go aggressive here, then we can trace another resistance line over here and sell it right there. We can try to accelerate the entries when we are finding the end of a wave, but being careful because too close to the top, more risky. Too far, too late. So we need to find a, a balance, you know, to have a high probability of reversal, not going crazy trying to capture the top of the market because that's Oh, that's horrible. It could continue higher and you can lose a lot of money. But with logic, with common sense, finding the top. And we can use the system. We can use the wave count. We can use price action. We can use candlestick patterns. We can use all the tools that we own. But look, now Elliott Wave is showing an scenario. And without Elliott Wave, we are not going to have an scenario and without the, the, that the roadmap is going to be pretty hard to take the trade. Right? It's going to be pretty hard. So it's better to have this setup and wait for the reversal. All right. Fantastic traders. Oh, and we have a question on the, on the, on the higher time frame on the weekly, I think. So Hunter says, for oil, your wave C red circle is below the chart. I know it's crazy, right? This is, this is, this is crazy. This is my same analysis that I have before. I didn't change it. Look here is the same. That was the, the one that I was expecting. This is like the expected versus the result is when, like when you buy something online that you have a nice picture on Amazon of anything you are buying and then what what it comes is is different yeah it's the thing but it's different so it's like that you know it's the same thing i didn't change anything from january that that was the forecast but the the difference is that this wave a is like this breaking everything and i'm not having room for the seal like i might need to make some cleanup of the wave can later but i don't think I don't think that oil could go to negative the spot market. Well, 
I have been reading that in the real life, if you, you, if you go into, in America to an oil producer, they are going to give you the barrel, the oil barrel, plus some money. So that's a negative price because it's cheaper for them to give you money to take out the oil out of, of the field rather than they pay a lot of money eh, to storage of the oil. It's more expensive. So actually, that has been happening. The oil companies are giving free oil plus some money on top to ask people, to ask buyers to, to, to take oil because they have so much oil that is too expensive to storage. So maybe that's why we have the futures market going minus 40. And here could happen, you know, it's against all the laws, it's against all the regulations, it's against everything, but it could happen. But maybe not, maybe the oil just goes to the $5 area and then the world starts working again and, and uh, we can start uh, spending more oil and that can help the price. But for now, I don't think it's a good idea to buy oil. I don't think so. If we're finding a, a bottom of the market, I don't think so. We, we have more room to the downsides. <laughs> really nice case. All right, traders. So it was a nice webinar. We covered a lot. We covered stocks, futures, and some Forex. As always, it's a pleasure. I have a special offer for you today. If you want to join my, my course, please visit elliotwavestreet.com right now. And under the education tab, here on top, you are going to find the offer, the special offer that we have these days. You will find all the study plan. So you are going to learn all the Elliott Wave theory with examples on different markets. You are going to get the Cyclone Revolution strategy with all the things how to set up, all the things how to use all the indicators. It's a fantastic course. And you are going to have access to 60 days or two months for one additional dollar to, to see all these markets every day. Then it's going to be $99 per month because I do live analysis, market analysis every day. I send you a video, I send you charts, I send you commentary, I send you everything. So you can have access to this membership just for $1 buying the, if you buy the course for two months and then $99 per month. And then you are going to have also access to the forum, the students forum and lifetime access to the course. As always, it's a pleasure to share with you some of these wave counts, some of these analysis. Please continue here browsing the Elliott Wave Street website. I'm going to continue sending you analysis, live market analysis, ideas, and more. Have a fantastic trading week, and I'll see you inside the course. Take care. Bye-bye. The Trading Show.